Hallo, herzlich willkommen zu einer weiteren Folge unserer MySport Stream TV Serie. Und ich hoffe, ihr seid ausgeschlafen, die Kaffeetasse steht bereit, das, Kaffee, das, das Frühstücksbrötchen ist geschmiert. Ich grüße euch ganz herzlich hier aus Hamburg. Die Sonne lacht durchs Bürofenster. Ich freue mich, dass ihr euch die Zeit nehmt, uns heute ein bisschen zuzuhören. Und uns, das sind der Manuel Ferris vom Convention Büro aus Valencia, den werde ich gleich live zuschalten. Doch bevor ich das tue, hat uns der Manuel einen kleinen Film mitgebracht, so als Einstimmung. Und während ihr jetzt noch vielleicht den Zucker oder die Milch in euren Kaffee tut, freue ich mich, euch ein paar wunderbare Sequenzen aus Valencia zeigen zu dürfen. Und danach beginnen wir mit unserem Mais-Webinar über die Destination Valencia. Und ich verspreche euch, ihr erfahrt aus erster Hand, was gerade in Valencia wie ähm, los ist und was ihr gerade wissen müsst oder wissen solltet und warum Valencia für eure künftigen Veranstaltungsplanungen nach wie vor eine top mais destination ist. In dem Sinne sage ich an der Stelle einmal Film ab. Lieber Manuel, ich sage an der Stelle einmal herzlich willkommen von Hamburg, Grüße nach Valencia. Dear Manuel, hello, welcome at our MySports Stream TV show, the webinar about the beautiful and wonderful destination Valencia. How are ja, you? Ja, sehr guten Tag. Ja, sehr guten Tag. Danke, danke Peter. Ich hoffe, es, Ihnen, äh, es geht Ihnen gut. Uh, well, the, the truth to be told is that it's uh, sunny here as well. It's a very nice uh, and warm day. And uh, well, looking forward to do the presentation. Great, so let's start. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. I am Manuel Ferris. I'm the head of the Valencia Convention Bureau. And I'm going to show you a presentation about Valencia with the, with the key points, the bullet points of the, of the city. And after this, uh, you're going to show another video. And should you have any questions, I'm at your, at your disposal at any time. So we start with the, with the first slide, uh, which is Valencia Meet Surprise. Uh, we, we came up with this with this logo uh, because uh, we were checking on, on our polls the many many visitors they didn't expect what they what they got once they, they arrived to Valencia so uh, many visitors especially from Germany they know exactly what they expect when they go to Mallorca Barcelona Madrid or, or Seville but uh, the moment they step in Valencia they don't know exactly what, what to expect so this is this is a key point I mean you are bringing your conference you are bringing your incentive to Valencia and the people attending it, they are going to be very positively surprised. So, uh, first of all, I'm going to start with the location. Uh, uh, is uh, Valencia is located on the, at, at the southeast uh, coast of Spain. It's more or less 400 kilometers south from Barcelona, 350 kilometers uh, uh, east from Madrid, and it's only 45 minutes flight from Valencia to Palma de Mallorca. I'm going to make a short introduction of, of the city. As uh, you can see here, this is a very nice picture of the city center with the Valencian flag, uh, which has a lot of history because in, in the old times, uh, 15th, 14th century, we used to be uh, a kingdom with our own flag, our own king, etc. Uh, well, then Spain converged into a single country and until now. This is another image that I like a lot. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the word in English, the, the, the right word in English is not lake, it's lagoon. So it's a barrier of sand uh, separating, you know, this, this lagoon from the sea is, uh, is, is uh, very huge. It's as big as the city itself. 
And then uh, I'm going to tell you a bit, uh, a couple of details of Valencia. So Valencia was established in 138 BC. And going to make this joke, even though it's not that funny, but it's not before coronavirus, it's before Christ. And it was established by, by the, the Roman Empire. Uh, it's actually uh, the third largest city in Spain after Madrid, the capital, and Barcelona. The population is more or less around uh, 1 million inhabitants. Uh, average temperature, we're talking about 19 degrees and more than 300 sunny days per year, which allows you to do a lot of outdoor activities with either your incentive, conference or convention. Uh, we have one of the largest ports on the Mediterranean. Uh, I think it's the largest in the Mediterranean western coast. And uh, probably you heard about uh, paella or paella, which is uh, very famous. Everyone knows about the paella. There are many types of paella. I'm not going to comment on that, but uh, well, the, the birthplace of the famous Ispaella is Valencia. And the reason why is that in this lagoon that you see there, we cultivate, we have all the rice fields. So for, for many, many years, especially since the Arabs uh, arrived in, in, in the region, they brought many things. One of them was the rice, and since then we have been cultivating it. And uh, then, of course, the Turia Gardens. The Turia Gardens is actually a massive engineering um, uh, project that uh, took place uh, in the 70s. They started and they finished in the, in the, at the beginning of this uh, century. Uh, we used to have a river. I mean, the river is still in place, but we diverted the course of the river so that the river goes outside the city. And then uh, what do you do with the old river bed? So we, we had two projects. One was to convert it into a highway to concentrate the traffic in there. And the other one was to create a park. Luckily, the park won. And now we have more than nine kilometers long and more than 250 meters wide uh, park. And especially because we started planting, you know, trees and different plants, etc. Everything was growing so fast that right now it seems like a forest in the middle of the city. And this is also a place that you can bring your incentives uh, with, uh, with biking, walking, discovering the city center as well. You can go in there, get out of the traffic and all the sounds, and then go back into the monument that you want to visit. So it's a very cool city. Why Valencia? This is another image that is quite, uh, uh, quite impactful in many ways. Uh, so you have the city of arts and sciences, which I will explain later on, but it's like the icon of the city right now. And then you have all the runners there, this is the marathon. The marathon is, is actually very big. We, we were supposed to have this year more than 30K uh, runners. Uh, we don't know because of the COVID, but uh, we expect at least 15 to, to 20,000 20, runners. But it's awarded with the gold label only 11 cities worldwide have, <clears throat> sorry, have this, uh, this award. Uh, and this award is given because many reasons, safety, uh, organization of the, of, the, of the marathon, and also athletes, elite athletes that are competing in this, in this uh, marathon. But uh, it, it's, it, it has been uh, used by many companies to bring people that they were interested into running so they did a kind of incentive. They, they were brought here just to compete in the marathon and they uh, enjoy the city at the same time. And, these are, and, and this is one of the, of the other cool pictures that I, I, I use for the presentation. This is the only UNESCO World Heritage Monument that we have in the city. It's the Silk Exchange Building. Uh, and, and this is a contrast. I mean, when you go into the city center, all you see are buildings like this one. Then you move just 10, 15 minutes walking, and then you have the city of arts and sciences, which is very modern. So the contrast is one of the key points of the city. This huge difference between one part and the other, and they are so close to each other. Uh, then Mediterranean pleasures. Uh, I mean, we call it pleasures, but it can apply to gastronomy, it can apply to the weather, it can apply to many things. But this Mediterranean way of living, a Mediterranean way of you know, uh, doing things in the sense that we are most of the time outside, we enjoy the good weather, we like to meet outside either for business or for pleasure uh, or for leisure. Uh, then green attitude. Green attitude in the sense that, uh, for instance, we have the, 
cultivating fields, so farmlands, just surrounding the city. So we consume most of what we produce, and this is zero impact in everything. I mean, if you are producing lettuce or you are producing uh, carrots or you are producing, I don't know, rice, and then you are consuming it, then you are not exporting, I mean, you are not importing it from, from uh, different areas. Of course, the population is, is not only uh, uh, using this, this production, but at least you reduce the consumption of, uh, of vegetables, fruits, and other things uh, imported from other, other places. And also, because we have been trying to convert the city into a green city in the sense that you have parks, you have uh, green spaces all over the city, not only for tourists, but also for locals. Because if the locals are happy, the tourists will be happier. Unique gastronomy, as I said, paella, we have more than 45 different recipes of rice. So you could be like almost two months uh, eating only rice, different types of rice, using everything we have, especially seafood, but also chicken, rabbit, uh, vegetables, etc. Uh, and then more than that, we have a lot of recipes as well with uh, either fish or, or meat, only uh, from the region. Good value for money. This is uh, talking about, and this is, this is a good indicator, uh, the, the hotel price in Spain, there's a ranking every year that is published. And uh, Valencia is always on, as I said, it's the third largest city in Spain. But in, in, in terms of uh, hotel cost, it's the 14th. One four in Spain. So, uh, as you can see, I mean, it, it's a large city, but the prices are quite content. Uh, vibrant culture. The Silk Exchange building is, is, a, is a very, very nice monument right at the city center. But then you can move around it and then you can discover so many museums all located just a few blocks away. Um, we have the second finest fine arts museum in Spain after the Prado in Madrid and there, there's so much more related to art, the painting um, uh, and, and, and other things related to culture that is, is within walking distance. So that's why we say vibrant culture because you can just jump from one place to the other uh, in just five minutes. So it allows you to see many, many things related to culture. Sighting nightlife, I mean, uh, there are several areas in the city and each area has its own uh, nightlife scene. And then feeling safety, this is, this is something a, a bit controversial because when you, see, when you listen to safety, it can apply to different, different things. In, in, in our case, safety applies to uh, the, the, the rankings, the, the, the statistics that, uh, for instance, Europol has. So according to these statistics, Valencia is one of the safest uh, uh, cities in Spain and also in Europe. How to get to Valencia? Well, this is the Valencia airport, sunny day again. And I want to explain, I want to comment on this because it, 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 it makes no sense to say that tomorrow when we pass this, this uh, pandemics, uh, everything will be back to normal in just like this. It's not going to be like this. It's going to take some time. We have been talking to different airlines. They all agree that 2020, they, they will start flying again. They don't know how, how many flights they will operate. They don't know how many destinations they will fly to. But uh, for sure, they will re recover at least uh, between 20, 25, and 50%, depending on the company and depending on the destination. But then for 2021, they are quite optimistic and they said that we could, we could be back to 80% of the traffic that we used to have. So this is an image uh, of what we had the day before uh, coronavirus, uh, you know, uh, we had the, the lockdown and then coronavirus was in our lives. So uh, as you can see, flights from Germany, you have from Berlin, you have from Hamburg, Köln, uh, Frankfurt, Stuttgart, Munich, uh, Dusseldorf as well, Betze, uh, 70 kilometers from, from uh, Dusseldorf. Uh, but, but you have from north to south, almost any big city is connected to Valencia. Uh, we expect to be recovering all these flights, as I said, from 2021 onwards. And in case we do not recover these this flight connections, and you then you can do either flight to uh, Palma de Mallorca and then 45 minutes connection or you can fly to Madrid or Barcelona and then you can connect with the 
high-speed train because we are connected with a high-speed train with uh, Madrid, with Barcelona and with Seville. A uh, high-speed train is like Itze in, in Germany. So uh, just to make you an idea, as I said, 350 kilometers from Madrid to Valencia. With the uh, high-speed train, you cover this distance in 90 minutes, nine zero minutes from city center to city center. Now, talking about where to stay, this is the Western Valencia. It's a five-star property. It's located in an historical building. It, it was a, an old factory. And uh, while well, they kept the facade and now they, they reconverted all the interior part, it has a, it has a very nice um, uh, like garden in, in, in the middle with uh, palm trees. And it's very nice, centrally located, 135 rooms. Very nice uh, uh, offer in terms of uh, service and, in my opinion, one of the best hotels we have in town. This is another hotel. The image you see there is the Las Arenas Balneario. It's the only resort we have in the city. It's part of the leading hotels of the world. Uh, it's a five-star property. Uh, they have uh, spaces for meetings up to uh, a uh, 500 people, sorry. And they have uh, plenty of uh, different comedy rooms, etc. So it's either, it's also a venue for events, but at the same time, it's a luxury hotel. And to summarize what we have, excellent offer in three, four, and five star, especially concentrated our offer in four star. Uh, international hotel chains, as I said, well, you have uh, uh, Starwood Marriott, and then you also have Milia, NH. Number of rooms in the city, more than 8,000. Number of beds, more than uh, 15,000. Average price in five star, and this is, as I commented before, this is a good indicator, 162 euro. Of course, it depends on the season. It depends on many variables, but as average, it's lower than most cities, big cities in, in, in Spain, and surely more cities in, in Europe. Four star, average price, 86 euro, and average price in three star, 66. Now I'm going to comment on different venues, uh, as uh, we have here uh, either congresses, conventions, incentives, uh, uh, product launches. Uh, so we cover the whole spectrum. Uh, the Valencia Conference Center is mainly designed for conferences. Uh, it was awarded as the best convention center in the world in 2010 and in 2011, and in 2018, sorry. It was designed by Norman Foster, and it has a maximum capacity of 3,000 people. It's also considered a green venue because all the roof, the shape of the building is like a like, uh, leaf. Uh, so the, the whole roof, which is more than 4,000 square meters, uh, it's covered with solar panels. So it produces all the energy it consumes per year. So it's impact zero. Well, Feria Valencia, Feria Valencia, as you can see, is a massive space. It's the largest exhibition center in Spain. Yes, it's the largest and the fifth in Europe. So if you are thinking about a big convention or a big exhibition with a small conference or a super product launch, this is your place. Going back to what I told you before about the icon of the city, etc., City of Arts and Sciences, designed by um, Santiago Calatrava, which is, who is a, a Valencian architect. He was born in Valencia, he studied in Switzerland, and also in Germany, if I'm not mistaken, and then he came back. He's an engineer, he's an architect, and he's an artist. And with this combination, he designs all these kind of, uh, you know, uh, incredible buildings uh, that it, they look that they come from the future. Uh, and the City of Arts and Sciences is his masterpiece, and it's composed by different buildings. So you have the hemispheric, which is a space up to 800 people for a gala dinner. Uh, the, the larger one that you see there, the white large one, is, is the Science Museum, which uh, has a capacity of 1,500 people for a gala dinner, but also contains a small auditorium for 350. And they have plenty of space for exhibition. And then at the end, where the, you see this, this bridge, and then behind you see like a blue uh, building, this is the Agora. It's going to be converted into a museum, but it's also going to be used as... Um, as a space for events. Uh, it has 5,000 square meters and more than 30, 30 meters high. Palau de les Arts, 
this is a bit weird because this is part of the city of arts and sciences, but because it's managed separately, we put it as a separate venue. But from this Palau de les Arts, you just walk this path that you see with people over there, and then you end up at the city of arts and sciences. So as you can see, it's the whole complex all together. Palau de les Arts is the opera house. Uh, which is quite impressive and it has a lot of different spaces. Of course, you have auditorium, uh, two auditoriums actually for more than uh, 1,500 people. And then you have several committee rooms and spaces uh, that vary the capacity from uh, 30, 40 smaller ones up to 1,000 uh, for gala dinners in, in, in some other spaces. And of course, the outer space, as you can see, it can be used. This was for a concert, live concert. And, and this concert is the Berkeley Music School because uh, they are, of course, in Boston, in the US, but they have their office in Europe, in Valencia, and it's next to this uh, Palau de la Salle. So you can hire them, you can contract them to show, to, I mean, to give you a, a live show for your events as well. Then as events, then we move. So we have been at the city center, we have been at the city of arts and sciences, and now we go to the seaside. Uh, Belles Events, it was, uh, Valencia hosted the America's Cup, which is the largest uh, sailing competition worldwide, twice, in 2007 and in 2010. So, uh, for this event, we have to construct many uh, facilities. One of them was the Belles Events. The Belles Events was uh, the VAP building for, for you know, watching the, the whole competition. And after the America's Cup was gone, what can you do with it? So uh, a company arrived and took it over to the managing over. And uh, now it's a gastronomy building. So you have uh, on the ground floor, you have a Mediterranean restaurant with a capacity up to 150 people. Then on the on the middle floor, you have like, um, like small kitchens that you can do first, small seminar about gastronomy, local gastronomy, and then go to the next door. And then you can do show cooking or live cooking or a master class in something that you chose uh, beforehand. And then on the, on the top floor, you have a, an exclusive restaurant that can also be converted into uh, an open space with a capacity up to 800 people. So combined is a massive venue that you can use for many different purposes and also is linked to the rest of the marina. Uh, and the marina, within the marina, you also have larger spaces, such as the old docks of the, of the port, which uh, can accommodate more than uh, 2,000 people, or other spaces where, where we organize like open air uh, concerts and things like that. So it's also a very interesting place, very nice, and it's not that far from the city, uh, from the city center, so either you can be located right in front of this venue at the uh, Las Arenas Resort, or you could be at the city center and then move there just by taking a transportation 10 minutes. Then I'm going to talk about some venues that are nearby the city, but not inside the city. Well, this is Cartuja de la Cristi. As I said, again, the contrast, very modern developed events, very old, this one. Uh, Cartuja, it refers to the Cartujos monks that were living in this venue, in this uh, in this uh, cloister for, for many years. It, it, it comes from the 15th century. And now it is, it is managed by a catering company and it can accommodate, it depends on the format of the event, but uh, you go from 200 people up to a thousand people with no, with no problems, combining an outdoor and indoor spaces. What to do? I mean, I use this picture because it's, it's quite popular. I mean, you take the bikes, Valencia is quite flat. So uh, we have been developing a lot the the bike lanes all, all over the city. Uh, you have public bikes. You can also rent bikes from different companies. Uh, but it, it's, it's it, I would say, one of the top or the most popular activities in Valencia. The weather is nice. The city is flat. There is a, a good, uh, you know, um, a good uh, bike lane all, all, all over the city. So why not organize a bike tour? And you can go from the marina, from the seaside to the city center, going through the Tulia Gardens. You can go to the business area. So wherever you go, uh, wherever you want to go, you can go by bike. Other activities. Well, this is at the Albufera. This image is at the Albufera. And what you see there is, of course, there are a lot of palm trees all over the city. 
and also in the surroundings. And uh, what you see, the house is a typical house from the Albufera surroundings. So this is like a farmhouse for uh, the farmers that were living there. And now some of them are being used as, a, as a, an events venue. They are not very large, so we are talking more for incentives. But of course, you can always use the auto part as it is used in this picture. Uh, so I'm going to just give you a couple of ideas. Of course, the bike tour, the boat tour in the Albufera Natural Park, as I said, the lagoon plus a natural area all together next to the city. Uh, of course, you can do the paella show cooking, master class. You can do a tapas tour, although it applies to all of Spain. It's also very popular in, in Valencia. You can do a ceramic worship. Ceramic, it, it was very, very important in the, in the past in, in Spain and especially in, in Valencia. We used to have very large like fabrics of ceramic. Now, not anymore. We have left our small workshop that they, they, they do everything um, handmade. But they are opening up, so they are increasing their business by allowing these kind of activities. And it's working very well. So imagine that you bring here a conference, you want to have a present for the attendees, so they go back with something typical, so they can do this ceramic worship, they can create something by themselves, and then bring it back home. Then the Mestedi Stadium, if you are into football, you could like to, to visit uh, the, the oldest stadium in, in, the, in the La Liga. Then experience nautical sports, all related to you know, the America's Cup, sailing, catamarans, going out, skydiving, sky and things like that. Then the oceanographic, which is the largest marine park in Europe, uh, there is a very nice activity once it's close to the, to the public, after six or seven, depending on the season, you can go with your group, you can do a private tour with a guy, he can explain or she can explain uh, about the park, what uh, projects they run there, because it's not only oceanography showing the animals, it's also they, they do some, some projects related to uh, to the flora and fauna of uh, the region of Valencia. And after this, after this tour, you end up at the submarine restaurant, which is one of the nicest restaurants we have in the city. So all together, it's a great experience. Of course, the last tour, it depends on the group and uh, you know the, the, exactly what they want, but you also have opera. It's a combination of the, uh, I mean, the nice venue and as well the opera. So it could be an opera experience, also the casino with the poker experience. Casinos next to the uh, conference center is considered a green venue with uh, solar panels. They recycle the water. Uh, they, they use only materials from no more, no more than 40 kilometers away in order to construct the building. And, uh, and they, they do this kind of, of experiences just focused on small, uh, focusing on smaller groups. Sustainability, and, and this is something that is, uh, this is my, my personal opinion, but I think it was very important before, and it's going to be key after the coronavirus, because uh, without, you know, taking care of the environment and, and protecting, you know, what is, what, is, uh, what is natural, then we are more, uh, more exposed to this kind of, of pandemics and, and viruses. So uh, sustainability, uh, we have been running a program for the last uh, two, three years. And then we have a new and very ambitious program for the next four years. And uh, actually we are, we are working together with some cities that uh, they, they, they have developed and they are very strong at this, such as, you know, Scandinavian countries, also some in Germany. So uh, we are, I'm going to, to summarize just a few projects. By the way, this is, this is an image of the Tudia Gardens. And as you can see, you can bike there, etc. But it, it looks like a forest in the middle of the city. So the Valencia Conference Center, as I explained, with the Eco Project, Casino Valencia, again, sustainable mobility with bikes, it, it, it has been increased by two digits from the very moment we started with the bike lanes and the bike and the bikes in the city uh, every every single year. So right now. Those who use the bike to go to work represent more than 30 percent. Whereas four years ago, there was there was less than than uh, five percent using the bike to go to work, and it's increasing every year. Uh, and this is only taking into account people that go to work, not taking into account people that go, for instance, as uh, students to secondary school or universities. If you sum all this, 
it will be high the rate. And of course, electric buses. Uh, as I said, caterings are focusing on local production food and they are adapting to the different seasons production, which is very good. And at the same, uh, at the same time, it's tasty because if you have the orange, uh, many people think that oranges are produced all year round. It's not true. Orange is, is uh, normally it starts the production at the end of September, beginning of October, and it ends at April and the latest, latest May. Why? Because uh, the orange is produced in winter time and it, it gives you a lot of vitamin C. Vitamin C is especially relevant in, in winter time. So all these kind of things are taken are, are being taken into account for for you know uh, all, um, producing different menus uh, during different seasons and local uh, local catering companies they are focusing on that. Then as a city we signed the Mil uh, the Milan uh, Urban uh, Food Policy Pact, which uh, has a lot of a lot of uh, uh, different agreements. Uh, then we have. We have a kind of uh, agreement as well with uh, Banco de Alimentos for the leftover speaker. So what they do, actually, we had a couple of experiences that were very, very nice. Uh, for instance, EFIC conference. EFIC conference is, is uh, a, a conference that uh, congregates more than 4,000 people. So they, they agree to collaborate with us, uh, with the Banco de Alimentos. So every single day, only with the leftovers, they were feeding 250 people for the three-day conference. So we are trying to export this to every single conference or convention or large event that comes into the city. Of course, the main focus should be not to waste any food, but in case you waste this food, I mean, it's not going to the rubbish bin, it's going to feed someone or it's going to be used for a different purpose. And then, of course, we're, we're focusing, I mean, we are developing right now, my team and I, uh, a dossier for social corporate responsibility focus on sustainability. So identifying those places that need a special care related to sustainable, uh, to uh, you know green areas, etc. So we can work on that, and then companies are not simply you know doing something to feel better. They are also giving a legacy that they can be proud at the city, and of course local people can benefit from that. So it's a win-win situation, and then. This is the railway station. There's plenty more to explain. I already gave you a lot of data, but uh, <laughs> you surely will forget. No worries. You will have my contact details. Should you have any questions, should you have any any inquiries, you can always contact me, and I will be happy to 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 help you out. So, thank you. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, surely. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Bye bye. Thank you. Und jetzt machen wir das Ganze nochmal mit Ton. So, ihr Lieben, ich sage herzlichen Dank äh, für das äh, wunderbare kleine Webinar. Schön, dass ihr euch Zeit genommen habt und habt äh, zugeschaut. Ich hoffe, diese Folge hat euch ein wenig Spaß gemacht. Sie hat euch informiert, sie hat euch inspiriert über Valencia. Äh, sie hat euch auf Ideen gebracht für künftige Veranstaltungen, die ganz bestimmt wieder kommen werden, sobald dieser Lockdown vorbei ist. Bitte schreibt doch eure Fragen oder eure äh, Kommentare in die, äh, in die Kommentarzeile. Manuel wird diese gerne beantworten. Weitere Informationen, wie immer, haben wir für euch aufbereitet auf äh, www.mysport.com. Und bevor ich mich jetzt de facto von euch verabschiede, 
ähm, haben wir noch ein kleines Video, was der Manuel uns im Vorfeld geschickt hat. Und dieses Video möchte ich euch natürlich nicht vorherhalten. Deshalb sage ich auf Wiedersehen und Film ab mit einem weiteren Video über die Destination Valencia. Danke euch und ciao.